Hi, Denise Gwen, reading aloud for you from my short story, The Greasy Spoon, Chapter 43. At one point during this raucous bull ride from hell, Ed had been in possession of his keys. They'd been in his pants pocket, as a matter of fact, when they'd been chained to the back of the pickup truck. But what happened to them in all the mess that followed? Did they get jostled out of his pocket at some point during this god-awful mess? Heck, his keys could be anywhere. They might have fallen out of his pocket at any point. Hell, they might have fallen to the gas-filled concrete bunker below the gassing cage. And if that's true, then Nick will never find them. Then again, the keys to Ed's car just might be on his person. On his dead person. Fuck. Nick climbs slowly to his feet. He's wasting time with all this mushy-headed thinking. I need to get a move on. He peers around the front corner of the pole barn, and yes, sure enough, both trucks are still parked in front of the office and nobody's in them. He studies the cab of each truck but doesn't see Maria in either one of them. She might be on her way to the trucks, or she might be hiding. Okay, okay. He turns back around to study Junior and the two rifles. He doesn't need two rifles, but he sure as hell isn't going to leave one lying around for Junior when he finally comes to. He picks up Junior's rifle, then stumbles through the grass and picks up Clem's, and tucks them awkwardly under his left arm and walks over to the back side of the pole barn, and it takes him a moment to identify Ed. His body has disappeared into the tall grass. He glances over his shoulder one last time. Jeb Jr. lies stretched out on the grass, still unconscious. He licks his parched lips. Okay, now. He books it down the back length of the pole barn. He feels horribly exposed as he runs. Jeb might walk out through that side door, guns a-blazing, and if he does, Nick figures, he might come out of that gunfight okay, or he might not. But he's taking an awful chance running down here this way. But he keeps on running, and to his surprise, he makes it to Ed's body and drops the rifles into the tall grass beside Ed and gasps and catches his breath. Not a single soul sees him. The left side of Ed's face is a grisly mess of meat and skin and shattered bone, leaving the right eye staring out at him unblinkingly as a fly lands on the cornea and rubs its sticky legs together. Nick flinches, closes his eyes, and checks Ed's pockets and comes across something small and hard and pulls out the key fob to the Mercedes. Jesus, what a fucking miracle. The keys to the sleek black Mercedes parked behind the courthouse in Parkersburg. Nick steadies the keys resting in the palm of his hand and wonders, did all this really happen just a few hours ago, or am I imagining it? It feels like a lot of years have passed since this morning, leading up to the moment where he presently finds himself kneeling in the tall grass at his dead friend's body. I'm sorry, guy. A sound startles him and he looks up. The side door that he'd escaped from with Maria and Ed earlier flies open and he yanks the handgun out of his back right pocket and sights it, ready to shoot. But instead of Jeb, a stream of Latinos burst out, crying and screaming. A sick feeling fills his heart. What is Jeb doing? And where the fuck is Maria? Maria.